Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about how Git operates within the local project folder. First, we'll go through some slides to get the concepts, and then I'll demonstrate with Git Bash. The start of a project, we have a folder and a file. And this is what we want to start tracking with Git. So in order to do that, we have to initialize Git in this folder. And we do that with the git init command. So when this is run, git creates a hidden directory called .git. And git uses this folder to track changes. So this is the user point of view. This is what we see. We generally just see a folder and a list of files in our project. This is what git sees. So git calls the project folder the working directory. And in the working directory it sees files as either tracked or untracked. It also has a staging area and this is for files waiting to be committed to the repository. And the .git directory is where all the track changes are held. So now we want to start tracking our file. So we use the git add command. When we run this command it puts that file in the staging area and now it's ready to be committed to the repo. In order to do that we use the git commit command and we use the dash m option to attach a message to the commit and basically that message is a description of the changes that were made. So we run that, a commit is logged to git and the file is marked as tracked. Okay, so now we want to start adding some files to our project. So we'll add a .css, a .js, and a .txt file here. And Git sees those as untracked files. So we want to start tracking these. So we'll use the git add command. And in this one you can see we're using wildcards. We can also list multiple files separated by spaces. And you'll notice that I'm not going to track the .txt file. So we run that, and only this .css and the .js file are put on the stage. So now we want to commit those changes, and we use the git commit command. And again, we'll use the dash m option and put a description on that commit. We run that, the commit is logged to the git directory, and the files are now considered tracked. Okay, let's say we made some edits to our index.html file. And now we want to add it to the staging area. So we'll use git add and the file name. And then we want to commit it to the repository. So we'll use git commit again. And that is the basic flow of tracking changes with git. Okay, here we are in git bash, and we're going to go through the steps we just did in the slides. I also have brackets open, and you can see that I have our project folder open, and we have one file, the index.html file, uh, to kick off our project. So back here in git bash, first thing we'll do, we'll do an ls to list files, and once again you can see that we only have the one file, the index.html. Uh, we can do an ls-a to show all files. And in particular here, you can see that we don't see the .git folder. So we can also do a git status. And here git is telling us there is no repository here in this folder. So let's go ahead and initialize git. And now if we do our ls-a, there's our .git folder. So now we can also do a git status again. And now we can see that git is alive in this folder. And it's telling us that we have one untracked file, the index.html. So let's start tracking that. And we'll do that with git add and then the file name. We'll do a git status once again. And now you can see that uh, the index file is in the section called changes to be committed and that means it's on the stage ready to be committed so let's go ahead and do that commit dash m and we'll give it a message uh, add 
index.html. Now we can do our git status again. And nothing to commit, working directory is clean. So that was committed to the git repository. So now let's do, oh, let's do a git log. This will show us a list of our commits. Now we only have the one and we can see our description of what we did in this commit. It was add index.html. So let's go into brackets and we're going to start adding some files like we would in any project that we would do and start off with style.css. We'll do a script js we'll do our notes.txt and just for kicks we'll also put in a main.css so that we have two css files back in git we'll do a git status and there we can see our four new files and they are untracked we can also do an ls to list all our files in this folder and now we want to start tracking these files. So let's do a git add. And we'll start off with star. Actually, let's do status here again, just so we can see our files. And then we'll do a git add. And we'll do a star.css to add the two CSS files. We'll do a space. And then we'll add the script.js. And we're not going to include the notes.txt file. We will not track that. So we'll do a git status again. Those three files are now in the staging area. We'll commit them. We'll just say add css.js files. Okay, and now we'll do a git status again. And so we no longer see those files. They've been committed. And we still see the untracked file the .txt file. Now let's say we do an edit to our index.html file. So let's open that one up and we'll just add an h1 here and say something like git demo good enough. Go back to git. We can say git status. We'll clear out the screen. And here we can see that uh, Git sees that the index file was modified. So let's go ahead and add that to the staging area. And we'll say index.html, git status. And there it is on the stage. And we want to commit it, index.html. OK, so now we can do a git status once again. And once again, the stage is cleared, and we still see that untracked file. Now, I don't like looking at that file all the time whenever we do a git status, so let's tell git to ignore that file. So I'm going to go into brackets here. I'm going to create a new file called .git ignore. And in this file, I can list all the files that we want git to ignore. So I'll say notes.txt. We can also do something like dot uh, uh, tmp. We can also do dot swap if we want. Any files that we want Git to ignore. So with that, we'll save it, go back to Git. We can do a Git status. And now we do not see the notes.txt file anymore, but we have a new file, the .git ignore. And I do want to track that, so I'm going to add it. And then I'm going to, let's do a git status. There it is on the stage. And I'll say a git commit. We'll do a dash m. And we'll say add .git ignore. Okay, we'll do and clear our screen and we'll do a git log. So now we can see all the commits that we've made. And that is, I think, everything we covered in the slides. So I hope you found that helpful. 
and thanks for watching. Okay, so the question came up, why do we stage our files and commit them? So the reason is, when we do work in our project, we want to stay organized in our project as well as the commits that we put in the repo. So, for instance, let's say we're in our project and we do some changes to, say, our index.html. Say we just add header tag here. So we make our changes here. We work on the header. We also go into our style.css and let's say we uh, to get something in there and when we come back to our git and we say git status so here we have a bunch of changes so it seems that we also did changes to our git ignore and we must have done some work in our script file but we want to commit just the changes that were done to the header so we would basically craft our commit by saying git add and we'll do our index.html and our style.css because those are the only files that had changes that had to do with the header. So now we'll do our git commit dash m and this way we don't have a bunch of other files in this commit that had nothing to do with doing work on the header. Um, this way we just keep everything clean, uh, organized, and uncluttered. All right, I hope that uh, cleared that up for you, and thanks for watching.